Hey folks, when last we left off, we had just heard about how Ernest Rutherford had discovered the nucleus of the atom, the fact that the positive charge was all concentrated in the middle of the atom and in a very, very small space. This was really the last time that an experiment played a large part in the development of a new model of the atom. Uh, we move to a different model with these next two. Um, so the scientists that we'll mention, Bohr and Schrodinger, instead of having some experiment where they discovered something new about the atom, their um, new discoveries were based more on math. Uh, the fact that you can sit down with pen and paper and data from older experiments and use math to explain what is happening inside the atom. And the first guy we're going to talk about that really did this um, was Niels Bohr. So Niels Bohr lived from 1885 to 1962. Notice how recently that was um, that he died. In fact, my father was 10 years old when Niels Bohr passed away. Um, this is not ancient history. This is not that long ago that all this was discovered. And Niels Bohr was a student of Rutherford's, and he was working on Rutherford's planetary model of the atom because everybody knew that that planetary model of the atom couldn't work. Um, if the electrons were in fact circling the nucleus, um, as they circle, because they have charge, things that have charge, as they move, as they accelerate, they give off energy. And as it gave off energy, it would move closer and closer to the nucleus. So if Rutherford's model was exactly right, then the electrons would just immediately crash into the nucleus and atoms would cease to exist. And since atoms exist, we know that couldn't be true. So Bohr was trying to reconcile uh, the fact that this nucleus had been discovered, but we still didn't know what was going on with the electrons. And using the evidence uh, of the fact that certain atoms give off certain colors of light, uh, he came up with a couple theories as to why that is. And the one that he settled on, we now call the Bohr model of the atom. And the nucleus was basically left unchanged from Rutherford's ideas, because Rutherford pretty much had the nucleus down except for the presence of neutrons. So the nucleus of the Bohr model is no different than the nucleus in the planetary model. What is different is the structure of the electrons. Rather than have them circle the nucleus in random uh, paths, essentially, Bohr said that the electrons will circle the nucleus at certain distances. And he called these distances energy levels, which makes sense because um, electrons a certain distance away from the nucleus will have a characteristic amount of energy. And so the electrons can circle in these um, energy levels, uh, again, just like planets around the sun. But what's different about this is that the electrons are not allowed to exist in between the energy levels. That is, in this space in between is nothing. Electrons simply cannot be there. The electrons can jump from one energy level to another, but they're not going to stay in between. And so what happens is that as these electrons move from one energy level to another, they either absorb energy or release energy. And Bohr's calculations showed that for a hydrogen atom, the energy that is released and absorbed is exactly the same amount of energy that's released in light by the hydrogen atom. That is, there's characteristic colors. Uh, every color of light corresponds to a certain amount of energy. And hydrogen emits certain colors, that is, certain energies of light. And Bohr's model predicted that perfectly. Now the thing was, is that any time it got even slightly more complicated than hydrogen, for instance helium, Bohr's model was just a little bit off. And then if you get, go on to a bigger atom, lithium, it's a little more off. And then when you get to extremely large atoms, something like, say, uranium, Bohr's model has almost completely fallen apart. The general idea is there, but it can't explain the details. And the next gentleman on the list is the one that filled in those details, Erwin Schrödinger. So Schrödinger was actually working on something that we call um, wave functions. And the idea was that we know that things like light can behave as particles or as waves. And there was an idea floated around about this time that matter could also behave like waves. Schrodinger developed an equation that allowed you to predict statistically about where an object was going to be by analyzing it as a wave. 
And by applying that idea to electrons, that is, instead of assuming electrons are like these little marbles that we can see and touch, assuming they behave more like waves, Schrodinger's equation that he discovered uh, allows you to calculate the probability of finding the electron in a certain place. And when this idea was applied to the atom, all of a sudden, uh, the behavior of the atom that could not be explained using Bohr's model could be explained using this. So notice again, no great experiment, just simply math. And this new model of the atom was called the quantum mechanical model. Um, and in this model, the big difference is that rather than saying we can know exactly where an electron is because it's like this little marble circling the nucleus, we say that we can never know exactly where an electron is. We can only calculate the probability of it being in a certain place. And we call those places orbitals. So an orbital is a place where you're very likely to find an electron. And you can sort of think of it uh, as if you're looking at a very fast fan or say a propeller on a plane. Um, you know about where the blades are because you can see this kind of cloud uh, where they're, it's almost smeared across your vision where this thing is spinning really fast. And you know if you stuck your finger in there you would find a blade, but you can't say exactly where one of the blades of the fan or the propeller is. Electrons work in much the same way. You can see a diagram of the quantum mechanical model of the atom. Each one of these clouds, that are different colors, so there's one in there, one in there, and then you have these balloon-shaped ones coming off the edges. Each one of those clouds is an orbital, and it's a place where you're likely to find an electron. So there was one somewhere in there. We don't know exactly where, but that's okay. We don't have to say exactly where. We can just say that it's very likely to be in there. And this idea really changed how we understand electrons, or atoms in general, um, in that we can't really predict individual behavior, but we can statistically predict what should happen. All right, the last big discovery was by a man named James Chadwick, and this was in 1932, he discovered the neutron. So previous to this, we had no idea that the neutron even existed. Um, we knew that there was a certain amount of mass and we just figured that that was from protons and electrons and that the charge canceled each other out, but it turns out that a lot of the mass was coming from these neutrons. And neutrons were really tricky to discover because they have no charge, and so it's very hard to manipulate them to get them to do what you want them to do. Um, but the neutron is, is found in the nucleus of the atom, and basically, as far as function goes, you can think of it as being almost like a glue that keeps the nucleus from flying apart. Um, there's something called the strong nuclear force, such that when protons and neutrons, or neutrons and neutrons, or protons and protons, get really close together, they can stick together. Now the problem is that protons all have a positive charge, so they repel each other. So it's really difficult to get those protons to stick together. But if you have a neutron in between them, they can both stick to that neutron, and it will hold the nucleus together. And we really won't mention too much more about neutrons. We'll talk about something called isotopes a little bit later in the course. Uh, but we're going to focus primarily on electrons because that's where chemical reactions are happening. Uh, but do know that Chadwick discovered the neutron in 1932 and that it has no charge and it's found in the nucleus.